Welcome back, it's me, Lou. Okay, so yesterday I went on a fig hunt. So me and my best friend, JC, uh, we kind of just like combed around the area, uh, searching out different stores and just, you know, went hunting for action figures. And yesterday I spent a lot of money and bought a lot of Batman action figures and vehicles. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to share the vehicles in this video. Um, they're kind of large and um, they won't fit underneath my camera. Uh, but in, hopefully in the near future, I'll cover which vehicles I picked up and we can go over them. But for today, we're just going to focus strictly on the action figures that I got. All right, so let's begin. All right, so the first Batman action figure that I picked up during my Batman toy haul was this. Um, I got the new Batman Adventures uh detective batman so this was from one of the animated series you know if you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s you'll you'll remember this fondly um i got this figure for 15 dollars, which i think was a reasonable price um i was i was looking for a very specific version of batman i wanted an animated batman to fit into um an animated batmobile that i also purchased and the big trick with that is that I had, the figure has to be the right size. You know, it can't be too big because the Batmobile was, you know, I think it was scaled down for more like maybe like four inch scale action figures between four and five inches. Um, the shoulders couldn't be too broad. And the most important thing with the figure was that I, he had to uh, either have a soft cape or a removable cape just so he could be seated inside the Batmobile. Uh, this I, Then I came across this figure. Uh, this guy has a removable cape, as you can see right there. So this is Detective Batman. Um, as you can see, it's a much more iconic look as he appeared in the cartoon. You know, there's nothing crazy about this guy other than the accessory he comes with. But it's pretty much, you know, the Batman in the black and gray with the gold utility belt. Here's a look at the card. You know, you can see Robin, you can see Nightwing, and then Batman. Uh, here is his flight pack, which is this. And it comes with, I think this is going to either like some sort of projectile, maybe like a missile. And, and, and then the gimmick for this is new crime solver. So it comes with like, I think like decoder gear, whatever that is. On the back, um, wonderful illustration of the animated characters you know I have mad hatter you have um robin batgirl and nightwing and they kind of i don't know there's kind of like a brief scenario playing out over here and then here's instructions and how to use the accessories uh, other figures in this line included mad hatter nightwing robin with some sort of like i don't know sled and then a very very cool batmobile I like this design a lot. If I could find this Batmobile for a reasonable price, I wouldn't mind adding it to my Batmobile collection. Uh, it's very sleek. It's not overly stated, and it just screams Batman. Uh, this came out in 1997 and is produced by Kenner. All right, so next, in terms of my um, big Batman toy haul, we have this. This is Special Legends Edition Crusader Robin. And it's you see Batman logo. Here's Crusader Robin. I got this guy for 12 bucks. Now, it's debatable whether this price is reasonable or not. For me, I want to say it is just because um, I have a very fond attachment to this action figure. Uh, this is actually the second release of this figure. Uh, and this is a repaint. Um, so... Uh, I, went, I went over this in a, another video. I think it was my one of my Batmobile videos. Uh, there was a line of toys produced by Kenner called Legends of Batman. Uh, it was aimed more so at collectors than kids. The figures were a little bit larger in scale. And sometimes the figures would have a weird gimmick or theme. Um, because during the 90s, uh, in the comic books, DC produced a line of comic books called DC Elseworlds. And they kind of took, you know, fit, like popular DC characters like Batman or Wonder Woman, and they'd put them in like in an alternate reality or alternate timeline. And you know, for example, there might be there was the very there was the very popular uh, Victorian era Batman uh, in the comic uh, Gotham by Gaslight. 
But these figures didn't necessarily pull from the comic books, but I think they, they drew inspiration from that idea. So what we have here is Robin as he'd appear during the Crusades. So he kind of has like, you know, time period specific armor. So it kind of looks like a knight with the helm, the shield, and the crossbow. So this figure, it, even though it's a, um, a Legends of Batman figure, it was carded on a red backing because the red backings, I think, if I remember correctly, were exclusive to the now defunct Warner Brothers stores. Um, at my local mall, we used to have a Warner Brothers stores. Warner Brothers stores, it pretty much is what it sounds like. Everything, all the merchandise was related specifically to any Warner Brother property, whether it was a movie or a cartoon or a comic book. You know, you could find like jackets, you know, with logos from your favorite movies. They would sell art prints and, you know, photos from uh, your favorite TV shows and movies that were related to Warner Brothers. And they also produced action figures. And most of the time, they were kind of action figures that you could find at retail. But they'd be, specific, they'd be uh, specifically repackaged and sometimes recolored j specifically just for the Warner Brothers store, which is the case right here. So we have Crusader Robin on the back. Um, it talks now. This is something we don't get nowadays. You know, nowadays we get barely any uh, description or bio on the character. Over here, we have a nice, meaty description and bio on Crusader Robin. And then here's some of the other action figures. There was uh, Night Send Batman, Viking Batman, Longbow Batman, Samurai Batman, the Riddler and Crusader Robin. So these were all exclusive to the Warner Brothers store. And um, like I stated earlier, you know, s these figures saw a general release at normal retail, uh, but these figures kind of had like premium paint jobs. Like the standard Riddler that you'd find like a Toys R Us would be just green. Whereas the Warner Brothers figure, it'd be like almost like a metallic finish. And this figure was produced in 1996 by Kenner Toys. Although it says 1995, so double year. And you'll notice the lack of a barcode because this was a specialty item exclusive to Warner Brothers. Uh, next, we have this. We have the Legends of Batman. Same line as I was talking about earlier, but these were the general lease that you'd find at retail, like at a Walmart or like a Target or a Toys R Us. Uh, this is Legends of Batman. This was from Wave 1. If you've seen my video uh, review of my Legends of Batman Batmobile, um, I make mention of this figure specifically. This was kind of like the lead Batman character for this line in Wave 1. Uh, it's, it's, a somewhat, uh, uh, it's a somewhat iconic uh, look. It's, uh, how, how do I word this? They take the iconic Batman, um, but there's a slight twist in terms of the color scheme. So from a distance, it looks like the iconic Batman, but instead of gray, it's kind of like a very light bluish gray. Um, he still retains the utility belt, the briefs over his tights. And this figure, the cape is removable. And the reason why it's removable is so that it can seat comfortably in this Batmobile, which I showcased uh, some videos ago. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But yeah, this was the iconic Batman from this little toy line. Um, I had this figure. I liked it a lot. My one complaint was that uh, his left arm was not in a neutral stance, you know, unlike his right one. It was kind of like bent out at the elbow like this, and it just looked kind of weird. Um, I could appreciate the fact that the cape was removable just so he could fit in the vehicle. I think that's cool. Uh, this is very indicative of the times also because during the 90s, uh, like I've stated before, you know, f f uh, toys that, that were aimed at collectors were more so seen as were seen more so as collectibles. So sometimes you, you get a little bit more sculpting and somewhat a little bit more dynamic pose. And this cape here is very reminiscent of the kind of, uh, you know, aesthetic that we saw in action figures during the 90s. You know, this was very this was popularized by McFarlane Toys with their Spawn um, toy line. Uh, McFarlane really raised the bar, and I kind of felt like a lot of other companies were trying to play catch up. You know, Hasbro and Kenner, and Toy Biz, and you know, just to name a few. But yeah, this kind of like flowing cape design. This is like something you found in the 90s. You know, 
Uh, this guy came with a trading card and also a weapon with projectile. 15 bucks for me was reasonable because I was hunting around this figure online on eBay. And, you know, I'd find similar prices, but at the same time, you know, I'd be paying for shipping, which would bring the price of this figure to, like, you know, anywhere between $25 to $30. So for me to find this guy for 15 bucks at one of my local shops, you know, I had, I had to say yes. And I'm very fond of this. You know, it's nice for me to reclaim this and bring it back home to my collection. A uh, nice lengthy bio on on Crusader Batman and also the history of the Legends of Batman. Uh, here's some of the figures in the earlier waves. Awesome Batmobile. Check out my video on that. And then here's Batman with all his gimmicks. There's there's Cyborg Batman, Catwoman. Uh, there's a really cool Joker figure. Um, uh, 80s inspired Nightwing, uh, Nightquest Batman. It's kind of like Azrael. And then some other ones. You have Batman on horseback. You have a Night Batman. Uh, you have a Bat Cycle, which is kind of odd because the color scheme is more so reminiscent of Batgirl than Batman, since this is uh, purple and gold. And then we have Future Batman. Again, an interesting take on like Azrael. So there is that. All right. So lastly, we come to this. This was the last figure I picked up during my big Batman toy haul. Um, we have the DC Direct 10th Anniversary Convention Exclusive. I got this guy for only $20, which blew my mind. Um, this was a Wizard World Chicago exclusive. Uh, during the late 90s and throughout the 2000s, you know, if you went to a comic book convention, especially a big one, chances are it was a Wizard World. Uh, the inaugural Wizard World event, I believe, took place in Chicago. Um, at the time, Wizard Publications, you know, they produced magazines such as Wizard and Toy Fair. Um, occasionally, they do appearances at Chicago Comic Con. And then I think there was this one year where they just took their money and they just bought Chicago Comic Con, rebranded it Wizard World. And then, you know, they kind of started that whole, like, convention circuit I, so i kind of like hold wizard world responsible for like the modern uh, pop culture convention you know that experience was all dating back to wizard world which kind of you know originated like you know in big conventions like chicago comic-con and san diego comic-con and this was a uh, exclusive put out by dc direct um So along with the advent of Wizard World conventions, uh, we kind of saw the debut of convention exclusives. So a lot of companies, you know, like um, DC Direct, for example, they produce action figures specifically sold, you know, at the comic book conventions. Sometimes these figures would be figures that you'd find like at normal retail, but, you know, maybe they're, the figure would come with a different accessory or like a special package. Um, and, you know, such was the case with this. This was the 10th anniversary of DC Direct. Uh, I talked about this in previous videos. DC Direct was a DC Comics' own toy company. And the reason why it was called DC Direct because it was going straight to the uh, direct market. And the direct market is like comic book shops and specialty stores. It doesn't necessarily infer like standard retail outlets like Walmart or Target. So a figure like this was something you could only obtain generally through like your local comic book shop or like a Tower Records or like an FYE. Um, uh, in this case, you know, this was made specifically to, uh, for Wizard World celebrating 10 years of the company's existence. Uh, I was very surprised when I found this figure. Uh, for me, 20 bucks was a steal. Even though the package is somewhat beat up and worn down, I could easily like just like clean it up and make it look nice. But what really blew me away was the quality of the action figure inside. So this was designed by Batman artist Andy Kubert. Uh, if you're familiar with that name, he belongs to the famous uh, Kubert line of comic book illustrators. His father is Joe Kubert. His brother is Adam Kubert. Um, there's also the Kubert uh, School of, I think visual media where you go to learn like how to become like a comic book artist or like a graphic designer or animator um what's interesting with this figure also is that it was a partnership done with graffiti designs 
if you were like a hardcore comic book fan or nerd in the 90s and you like frequented your local comic book shop, chances are any kind of merchandise that you bought, like, you know, especially like t-shirts, it was probably produced by Graffiti Designs way back when. So the package design is nice. It's almost kind of like a bookend kind of deal. You open it up. And then, uh, you know, it's celebrating 10 years of D of DC Direct. And on your left, it's kind of like showcasing, you know, some of their pieces that they made throughout the last, or at least at the time, their last 10 years. Uh, there was a Catwoman bust that's kind of based off of the Jim Lee Hush design. There was They made a one-to-one -one replica of the Batman utility belt. Um, some different statues. We have Sandman. We have a Mike Mignola inspired Batman statue. Uh, we have the Jim Lee Hush statue, um, an iconic Superman action figure. Uh, I believe a Superman statue, the anime inspired line of um, DC comic book heroes done in statue form. I believe this was one of their Swamp Thing statues. And then uh, this might have been like a, I want to say maybe like a 12 inch scale. Uh, Green Lantern from their line So DC Direct DC Direct celebrates 10 years of producing authentic collectibles based on the world's most recognized characters Designed by fan favorite artists and capturing moments from the greatest stories of all time And over here we have a wonderful this beautiful rendition of Batman You know this really captures the iconic Batman that we saw in the early 2000s you know, he's back to his gray and black, and he has the ovalized logo um, instead of the, you know, the simple bat on the chest. He has a beautiful utility belt, and it's a great looking figure. I think this figure is probably about, maybe if I had to guess, um, anywhere between maybe six and a half to seven inches. And even though the articulation is kind of archaic, uh, the sculpting is beautiful. I think this is one of the best Batman action figures I've seen you know, period. You know, it might not have all the bells and whistles of like a modern figure, but for me growing up during this time period, you know, this really hits home. I like this figure a lot. It's amazing. So yeah, this pretty much uh, wraps up my big Batman figure toy haul. Like I said, I grabbed some vehicles also, but um, as of this recording, I'm not sure if I'm going to showcase that in its own video or if I'm just going to highlight, e highlight each vid or highlight each vehicle individually. Um, I bought, uh, I think about like three Batmobiles and a Batwing. And they're all used, they're all kind of beat to hell, so I have to clean them up. So look, look forward to that in the near future um, when I go over those. But for now, this is my Batman action figure toy haul. Um, a lot of these figures, you know, I'm very sentimental uh, towards all of these. You know, I grew up during this time period. Uh, some of these figures I owned in my youth, and for me, it's just nice to have them back, mint on card. All right, so let's wrap this one up. Once again, my name is Lou. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.